Yo, what's going on people and welcome to my YouTube channel, Path to Enlightenment, Pure OCD. And in this video, I want to basically talk about, um, you know, very briefly, my experience of um, raising a child, raising my son, having a family while um, suffering with my mental health. So... One of the things that I find for me, which has been the most, one of the most difficult things is firstly being within the relationship with my partner. And the reason I say that is difficult, it's difficult in a sense that when you're somebody who suffers with your mental health, or for an example, let's just say you didn't suffer with your mental health and you were with someone that did, because that person doesn't suffer so for example in my personal situation because my partner doesn't suffer with her mental health to the degree that i do what happens sometimes is she can lack understanding or she can lack um understanding and accepting my suffering or the things I suffer with. So I could explain to her, I could say to her, look, this is what I'm suffering with. But because she doesn't suffer with it personally, there will always be a lack of understanding. She will get what I'm saying, but she can't identify with it. So that's one of the first things is, you know, when you're in a relationship with someone and you have different challenges, you know, there's things that my partner goes through that maybe I don't go through and therefore I will get what she's saying when she's expressing herself but because I'm not directly experiencing it it's very hard for me to have a sense of deep knowing and compassion regarding what she might be going through so in terms of uh, being within a family raising children being married when while suffering that's a challenge um, so my advice to anyone, you know, when you're dating or when you're looking or actively looking for a relationship, always make sure you express, you explain the best way possible, encourage your partner, could even be a friend, encourage your family and friends, your partners to research, to look into your diagnosis to look into the things that you suffer with for them to try and gain as much understanding as possible because what can happen is that if the person you're with and it doesn't have to be a relationship it could be a friend or family member if they don't understand what you're going through or what you're living with they could perceive your behavior or your actions as lazy rude weird out of order, out of character, etc, etc. Um, and I'll give examples of how they can perceive it like that. For an example, I've got a child, I've got a son. But because of my, because I suffer with my mental health, um, sometimes I feel lazy, sometimes I feel inactive, sometimes it takes so much strength out of me just to be an active dad. And that can be perceived as lazy. That can be perceived as, you know, you're not, you don't seem too bothered or you don't want to come out on a family outing or you're not, you're not very hands on today. What's going on? So the reason it's important, the people you're around understand what you suffer with and what you deal with is so that when you are, for example, feeling lethargic, feeling low, feeling, finding it hard to get out of bed or finding it hard to find motivation throughout your day. The person you're around, your partner, your friend or family member can look at that and say, ah, oh, do you know what? It's not that, that not, it's not that they're lazy. It's not that they can't be bothered. It's, they they're, they're struggling, they're suffering. This is what they suffer with. So, um, in terms of my experience, you know, having a family, having a partner, having my son, there's been difficulties, there's been challenges. Um, when there is understanding, when there is um, cooperation, things are running smooth. And for things that I do, for example, if I know that I find it hard to have the ability to do certain things because of the things that I suffer with, I will try and reciprocate or I will try and do other things that will 
that will try and um how do i say it that will try and um help in other ways for an example if because of what i'm dealing with if i'm struggling to be hands-on with with my son <coughs> and my missus is trying is basically doing 70 percent of of activities with my son then i would then try to do other things to lessen the burden off of my partner so i will do cleaning around the house i'll wash the dishes i'll wash the clothes so i wash all the clothes in our house and i'll try and do all the other stuff that i don't feel is too much of a will impact my mental health too badly so i actually find cleaning therapeutic for me when i wash the dishes when i clean clothes when i dry them when i hang them up I find that quite therapeutic for me. And the, the benefit of that is that that's one less thing for my partner to do. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's basically, yeah, like, you know, my encouragement is if you're looking for dating or if you're establishing friendships with people or just generally want your family to know, to know and understand why it is the way you act, the way you do sometimes, express share explain talk about what it is you feel talk about what it is you go through encourage your the people around you to research to read about your condition because then like that they're not just hearing it from you because if it's just coming from you it might be perceived as well you're you're just saying that you're just saying that because you know, deep down you're just lazy or whatever um so yeah so you know I've um there's times when I find it difficult but I feel like I'm in a place with my relationship with my partner where we're in a very very good place where we've I've expressed and I've explained and I'll give you examples right so I've expre explained to my partner that there are some things in my life that are set in stone, that cannot be shaken, that cannot be moved because they're vital to me. One of those things is going to the gym. I have to go to the gym because the gym for me is like a place of therapy. If I am not able to train, my mental health is just gonna dip and spike and things are gonna get out of hand. So the gym, you know, the gym is great. It, I've got videos on this. It releases endorphins, dopamine levels go up. It, it really benefits and helps me. It keeps me, you know, on the middle ground. So my my partner knows that gym is set in stone for me. When I say I'm going to the gym, there's no, oh, can you not go to the gym? No, it's a necessity. Other thing that I need is my social life. I need my social life. I need to see my friends. I need to be able to go out because that as well is a type of therapy for me. It distracts my mind, my mind from my thoughts. It distracts my mind from being consumed with um, intrusive thoughts and anxiety and all the other things. Especially like if I'm having a bad spike with my mental health, I will be doing these things a lot more often. I'll be going gym a lot more often. I'll be going out and seeing people a lot more often. And that can be perceived as, oh, you don't ever want to be at home. You're always out, you're always going to the gym or you're always going out with your friends or this and that. But, and I've had these problems with my partner before because I understand that that's how it's coming across. Like you're never home. Do you know what I mean? It looks like you don't want to be here. But what I'll make sure I do with that, if that has ever occurred or that's ever come up in conversation, I'll make sure that I'll express and explain that, look, I'm doing this because at the moment I'm really struggling. And when I go to the gym or when I go out with my friends, it's like I'm not I'm not dealing with what's going on. It's kind of like it acts as a distraction. It takes me away from, you know, um, what's going on up here. And I find that I'm I'm just generally an outdoor person anyway. Like the more time I spend at home, I feel like I get bombarded with a, with a lot more thoughts. So I need to be moving around. I need to be active. I need to be out doing something because it keeps potential spikes at bay. So uh, yeah, um, 
just basically an encouragement. This is how I've managed. Um, I've been with my partner for almost eight years now. We've got a beautiful son who turns five in February. And um, it's hard, it's hard. It's hard for people in general to raise a family, but it's even harder when you're somebody that suffers with your mental health. Um, it's, you know, I've always said that, you know, when you suffer with your mental health, it's something that's not seen, it's hidden. You, you, you can't tell if someone suffers with their mental health. Like I could be looking at you and smiling and you will walk away thinking, oh, you know, Fabs is a, a very happy guy, very jolly person, always smiling, always active, but you don't know what goes on up here because mental health cannot be seen. But if you're someone, for example, who, who had a, a missing limb or one leg to walk around on, you wouldn't be expected to do everything, would you? Because you physically can't. But because mental health can't be seen, it's almost like it goes, it gets brushed under the carpet. But there's some things, and I know a lot of people with mental health and there's other channels about this stuff that they, they really struggle to do things on a day-to-day -day basis because it just takes so much effort out of them. And why does it take so much effort out of them? Is because when you truly suffer with your mental health, every day is a battle. Every day is a fight. Every day is a war. When you wake up, it's a war. The moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, it's a war that goes on up there. So you literally live your life day by day, managing, just managing your symptoms. But that's why for me, I need these things in place because I don't just want to manage. I want to, you know, manage in a good way, like, I'm okay kind of thing. I'm not just managing or like scraping by. I want to be walking by, not like scraping or struggling to walk. I want to be comfortably walking, not running because I accept that I suffer with my mental health and I will suffer with this for the rest of my life. So I'm not going to be able to sprint through life like other people. But if I can walk at a steady pace, I'll be happy with that. So number one, always express help your 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 partner friends family understand what it is you suffer with how it affects you and the symptoms that come with it and um, number two make sure you have your outlets like i said but number three also understand where your partner's coming from and try to adjust and try to put things in place so that you can actually help your partner if it's not in this way then it will be in this way because ultimately you want a balance in your relationship you don't want one person feeling like do they're doing 90 percent of the stuff because then resentment and bitterness will, will build up and build up so you want to be able to reciprocate and and bring bring some sort of something else into the relationship that will balance and that your partner will appreciate as well so, uh, yeah, that's my two pence on that. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Path to Enlightenment. Pure OCD.